This chapter talks about the introduction section and its components for scientific writing for health research. So a scientific research paper generally follows the format of IMRAD, Introduction Methods, Results, and Discussion. The introduction section sets the stage for the entire paper and introduces the topic of interest to the audience. It also provides a broad context of the issue under investigation, summarizes what is known and unknown, and tries to convince the readers that this study will add to the current knowledge. Typically, the introduction section contains a broader background information on the topic, a summary of key existing knowledge relevant to the specific problem, the gap in the current knowledge, and the research question or the hypothesis, and though not essential, some authors briefly describe the study design and methods. To better organize these main components of the introduction section, it may be useful to build an outline or a skeleton of the section. One approach could be adopting a funnel shape or an inverted pyramid shape to organize the components. Based on the funnel shape, the introduction section has five key elements going from broad to narrow. Big picture, what is known, what is unknown, research question, and methods and design. So the introduction starts with the big picture, which introduces the general context and relevance of the research area and provides an overview of why this topic or issue is important. For a research paper in population and public health, it's a good idea to present the broader background information on the health-related topic, such as the magnitude of the problem and or uh, the burden of disease, for example, incidence, prevalence, or costs related to the disease. The big picture provides an understanding of the study outcome or explanatory variable from a public health perspective. What is known outlines the existing knowledge of the research area by providing a summary of the evidence. These can include landmark studies, reviews, or recent studies, and this summary should cite the most current and comprehensive knowledge on the subject. Note that the literature cited should be directly relevant to your specific study and inform your research question, and they should be focused on the particular exposure or disease of interest. What is unknown should present a synthesis of the big picture, what is already known and what is unknown, to convince the audience why there is a need to con conduct your specific study, in other words, the rationale for the study. For example, this part can highlight the gaps in the current knowledge, any inconsistencies in the literature, gaps in the methodology, or the need for a different or better methodology. It can also highlight who would likely benefit from this study. The last essential component of the introduction section is the research question. Following the identification of the gap in current knowledge, this part outlines the specific aim or purpose of the study. It should include the study objective or hypothesis that will address the identified gap in current knowledge. As previously mentioned, though it is not an essential component of the introduction section, you can also briefly introduce the approach used to answer the research question. This should be very brief as the methodological approach will be described in depth in the methods section. So why is the introduction section important? The introduction section can serve as a hook to grab the reader's attention in the beginning. It introduces the public health problem to the audience and tries to capture their interest to continue reading. By clearly outlining the key components, the introduction section should convince the audience that the population or public health issue under investigation is critical to address and that your particular study is novel and valuable. Some common pitfalls in the introduction section include incomplete, inaccurate, or outdated reviews of the literature on the topic. For example, including literature that is partially related or within the same field but not directly related to the problem can result in an incomplete or confusing review of the background knowledge. In addition, not adequately explaining the importance or the relevance of the current knowledge in relation to study aims is another pitfall. This can lead to an introduction section that is less effective in communicating the relevance and novelty of your study. Finally, here are some tips for writing the introduction section. 
clearly stating the study aims and rationales for the study objectives may be one of the most important aspects of the introduction section. So aim should be clearly articulated and the design of the study should be planned accordingly. And you should take time to think about the justification of the current study. Provide only the key references that are needed to describe the background knowledge as well as what is known and unknown about the topic of interest. Including an excessive amount of literature in the introduction can be distracting. Try not to overwrite as a lengthy introduction can make the readers lose their interest in continuing reading. Lastly, if you already have a general idea of the journal that you would like to submit your article to, the introduction section can be tailored to the audience of the target journal. For example, if you're interested in submitting to a methodology or epidemiology related journal, you may want to highlight the novelties in the design or methods of your study. If you're interested in submitting to a clinician-based or subject-specific journals, you may emphasize the clinical or public health implications of the study. Please have a look at the chapter for additional examples for writing the introduction section of a scientific article for health research.